For looking at the code, we'll click here on the Visual Basic Editor or maybe you can directly look at it from uh, the word Macros and uh, you can click on Sector Selection which is the only one here and we go to Edit. This is present under Sheet 1 and Modules. So this is what the code is all about. So code's name is Sector Selection and uh, this is a very small code but a very interesting one as well. So let's look at what it is actually doing. The first one is range a one dot select. So we were on uh, the sheet called uh, book one, and we were inside this uh, sheet one. So uh, the first thing that it did was to select a one as the cell. Then selection dot auto filter. So that's where we had gone to data and did a auto filter. That's what this command is all about. Then it says active sheet dot range. So uh, this is the full range from a one till a thirteen auto filter so this is the range which we are talking about this is field number two and criteria is back so this is field number one this is field number two and here the criteria is back so it looks like you know the code is uh, is a bit logical in nature so if we even if we have to kind of manipulate it we should be able to do it with uh, not much uh, difficulty so then what happens is uh, uh, once we kind of filter it say for example uh, for banks this is where we get so it says range a1 dot b7 dot select so it asks for selection of this and then selection dot copy and then once you have copied this range which is control C it asks us for opening sheet 2 because that's what this command is all about so it asks us to move into sheet 2 and then again select range a1 and active sheet dot paste so it paste whatever it has selected so code actually is kind of very simple so now that we have looked at the simple version of this macro let us introduce some of the complexities and understand uh, even more nuances of uh, the macro applications so let's go back to our excel sheet and uh, what we had here was the name of the companies and the sectors right there were three banks three material companies three software and three utilities companies now let's assume that uh, you know these this list is kind of dynamic in nature so what i mean by dynamic is let's say today we have uh, uh, three companies each maybe you know uh, we add two banks later maybe tomorrow after we have written the code you know we we update two more banks here so say for example there is two additions here bank 1 and bank 2 and uh, the classification is obviously banks uh, these are the two additions now I am assuming at this stage that the macro which we had created uh, and uh, if we sort using banks of obviously uh, I'm assuming that these two should also get exported as an output so let me try and do that if, if at, actually it is happening in this case of macro or not so for running a macro I'll go to developers alt f8 or going to the macro selection and then I'll run the macro as you can see and I was expecting the same that only three companies have actually shortlisted from the list of five banks there were five banks right there were three here and two here uh, however the ones which were output were only three so what has gone wrong with our code so uh, probably we may have to kind of investigate our code and kind of make it more dynamic in nature so let's go back to a visual basic editor and uh, see what was going on in the code itself so uh, as you can see here this uh, this line where after we have done the filtration process it says range a1 to b7 dot select okay and I'll show you what happens here once we select banks we see that this is the range a1 till b7 but this is actually till b15 right so uh, we have already missed uh, the two banks because of this restricted nature of the formula so ideally this should have been b15 so we want some way in which you know we can update this dynamically so let's take help from Excel again and uh, you know again as we we go back to the same logic we'll try and create 
a code using Excel and then logically manipulate if required. So I will go back to our default state and record a new macro. So this time I will probably uh, call this as a filter dynamic kind of a macro. So let's do that. I'll go to developers tab. I'm going to record macro and let me call this as filter dynamic. Okay. And I'm clicking OK as of now. So the first step that we did last time was to go to A1. So that's what would be similar, right? And then I click on filter. Second step obviously is same that I may want to select banks and I click OK. This is step number two. How will a step number three actually change? See, I'll, I'll tell you how it may change. The third one was to select the range and copy. So last time what we had done was we had, you know, manually selected these, right? So if we manually select these, our code will still work. But tomorrow, again, if there was bank three, bank four, bank five, probably we will land up in the same problem. So this is just a temporary solution. So we should have some dynamic solution to our problem. So uh, the solution lies here in using this formula. Uh, the formula is control, shift, and star. This is what you must use. Control, shift, and it's basically control, shift, and eight. So the moment you do this, you will find that uh, whole range gets selected. So control shift and eight. That's what I am doing from my uh, keyboard. Control shift. I'm pressing eight, and this whole range gets selected this time. Okay. So that's the only difference I am introducing in this uh, 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 dynamic filter. Then I would do a control C. Again, I'll go to sheet two. Click on a1 and then a control V so and probably stop the macro right so this is what I have done and um, let me uh, delete this macro and uh, just check for the moment that if this macro is working fine in, in at least in this case or not so I'll go to macros and then there is a macro which is filter dynamic I'll run this macro and you can see that okay bank 1 and 2 is absolutely fine now let me uh, just do some stress testing here uh, let me delete this and include another bank bank 3 and sorry uh, bank 3 and bank 4 so there are two new banks which I have now introduced after I have created the macro and uh, now I'm assuming that uh, probably things would be fine. So let's go to the macro now and click on filters dynamic and uh, let me run this macro. And yes, so you can see that bank three and bank four are now a part of this whole list. So as you can see, we have done something new or in a dynamic way. So uh, obviously a, a good way to look at is to look at the code itself. So I'll go to macros and understand what is different in this case. So I'm clicking here on edit and this is the code of filter dynamic and this was the code of sector selection which was the old one. Now uh, let's look at uh, what is different in this case. Okay. It says uh, all these three fields actually are essentially same. The thing which has kind of changed is these things called selection dot current region dot select. Okay. So selection dot current region dot select is a new term that gets introduced when we use uh, this thing called control shift and eight okay now another thing to note is that since uh, this uh, uh, because I was wondering here and there probably uh, I had selected cell a1 again see we were already on cell a1 I had actually placed my cursor here to start with and then we had done selection auto filter active sheet and uh, introduce then I'm again saying that's range a1 dot select so there are two times which I have said range a1 dot select for the same worksheet so I I don't think this is actually required here this is just an unnecessary uh, code that was introduced because I was doing something else in between and uh, from here to here I had actually clicked in between so that's that's what uh, this code has introduced some additional uh, 
um, lines uh, because of my uh, issues there. So this is how the overall dynamic code would actually work.